So we're back again for another video from the C2.5 um, uh, salts and electrolysis section for Key Stage 4 Additional Science or Triple AQA Science <coughs> um, High Tier Foundation. So we're looking at changes at the electrodes, a little bit more detail on electrolysis, specifically there are two key points. At the negative electrode in electrolysis, positively charged ions gain electrons. We call this process reduction, so if you're gaining electrons you are reduced. Because electrons are negative, I like to think that if somebody was given a negative idea, they would have been reduced by it, or made lesser by it, and at the positive electrode, negatively charged ions lose electrons. This is called oxidation. That's one key thing to look at. And there's a nice little tip to think about this, that if you get it right, remember the oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. So. Oxidation is loss and reduction is when you gain them. You are reduced if you gain negativity. Okay. Now, F on the uh, specification says that if there is a mixture of ions, the products formed depend on the reactivity of the elements involved. So we've got to consider the reactivity series. And now you get that in the exam, but you must be um, very careful to think about beforehand how you're going to use that in the exam. Okay, so we're thinking about anodes and cathodes and attraction of ions and what happens in detail at the anode <coughs> in terms of the electrons and where they're going. So here they're being donated and here at the cathode they're being donated the opposite way. So the electrode takes the electrons. In this case the electron is donating the, electrode, uh, the electrons. So during electrolysis, ions move towards the electrodes. The direction they move depends on the charge. So positive ions move towards the negative electrode, the cathode. The negative ions move towards the positive electrode, or the anode. And when the ions reach an electrode, they either lose or gain electrons depending on their charge. And the negatively charged ions lose electrons to become neutral. And positively charged ions form neutral atoms by gaining the electrons. So you, if you learn one way around, then the other is the opposite. There's a little task to do if, if you want to have a go thinking about this, this topic before you move on. Now, reduction then. In electrolysis of molten lead bromide, which we previously looked at, positively charged lead ions, PV2+, move towards the cathode. When they get there, each ion gains two electrons to become a neutral lead atom. So that's this picture, isn't it? So here we're gaining electrons and then it slides down the electrode to form a metal. And, and what we say is we're reducing, or the lead ions are being reduced. Reduction is another way of saying we're gaining electrons. Now the flip side of that is oxidation. So when molten lead bromide is electrolysized, ele electrolyzed, sorry, negatively charged bromide ions, Br minus, move towards the anode, positive. And I just noticed that should be a negative, shouldn't it, at the top. When they get there, each ion loses one electron to become a neutral bromine atom. So in this case, it gained two, but in this case, it's losing one, isn't it? And then two bromine atoms then form a covalent bond to make a bromine molecule, Br2. There we are. Losing electrons is called oxidation, and we say that the bromide ions are oxidized. So oxidation is another way of saying losing electrons. Good, good thing to remember both these boxes you could draw a diagram you could explain them the idea behind reduction and oxidation in terms of oil rig remember what we said go back to the top oil rig oxidation is loss of electrons reduction is gain so if we look at now higher tier ideas half equations and redox now <clears throat> we represent what is happening at electrodes using half equations we call them this because what happens at one electrode is only half the story. We need to know what's happening at both electrodes to know what is happening in the whole reaction. So at the negative electrode, it'd be a really simple way to put it, wouldn't it, that the lead 2 plus ions plus 2 electrons form lead. Notice how the electron is written as E minus. At the positive electrode, Br minus, and there are two of them, go to Br2 plus 2 electrons. Sometimes half equations are written showing the electrons be removed from negative ions, like this. So you could have the Br minus, but this time the electrons are taking them away to make bromine. So I've just moved a positive 
to the other side and then it becomes a negative because it's an equation. Neither method is more right than the other, it just depends on how you want to write it. In your exam you might see both. <clears throat> now because reduction and oxidation take place at the same time in electrolysis, reduction at the cathode minus, oxidation at the anode positive, it's sometimes called a redox reaction. So it's just something to be aware of, particularly for higher tier, and for higher tier you need to be able to balance these equations. Now here it gets a bit tricky. When we carry out electrolysis in water, the situation is made more complicated by the fact that water contains ions. The rule for working out what will happen is to remember that if two elements can be produced at an electrode, the less reactive element will usually be formed. That's the guy that nobody wants. So if nobody wants that guy, he, he or it floats away. Um, so it might bubble off or whatever. But it, if somebody really wants it, it will form an attractive compound, won't it? That's the principle. And we use the reactivity series. So here you've got the reactivity series for metals. And I've added in there hydrogen and carbon, which is sometimes useful, especially in this case. It's a good, good thing to think of that you get lead and then copper and in between is hydrogen and aluminium to zinc. We put carbon because you won't get that in the exam. You get the table, but you don't get those. Now hydrogen, think about this, is less reactive than potassium. So here's hydrogen down here. And where's potassium? Whoa, look, potassium's right at the top. K, symbol, most reactive. This is this diagram here, isn't it? You've got, so you've got hydrogen plus and K plus. Okay. So if hydrogen is less reactive, following the rule that we've just talked about here, at the negative electrode rather than potassium, when we electrolyze a solution of potassium compound, we will get... H2 gas, and we can test for that H2 gas using the squeaky pot test. Now if we think about the positive electrode, the anode, we find we get OH- ions from the water, giving oxygen, unless the solution has a high concentration of halide group, or a group 7 element, then we have the halide discharged instead. So again, a little bit more tricky on this one, you've got to really think about it, it's definitely a higher tier skill. Now, half equations, a bit of extra help for if you're a higher tier person. Now, think about this then. If I want to balance a half equation, write the formula of the reactant and the product. So we've got chlorine minus goes to Cl2. Now, we need to adjust the number of ions if needed. And in this case, clearly, 1 does not make 2. So 2 Cl's goes to Cl2. Now, potentially, you could write... Cl minus goes to a half Cl2, which is the same, but we tend to do it with the two. And then what you do is you count the number of charges and add enough electrons so that both sides have the total same number of charges. So look, this side, minus one times two is minus two. This side has zero. Now, of course, then I've got to have plus two minus charges as well on this side. Now, if we have a look at these examples, you've got aluminium, okay? So aluminium, I must have three electrons to balance it, because there are three pluses, so there must be three minuses. This one, Cl2 plus, okay, we have E minus, uh, sorry, copper 2 plus, a bit of a, uh, bit of a typo there, um, should be 2 E minus going to copper, um, H plus plus E minus goes to H2, so it's 2 H plus plus 2 electrons. And so on. Very similar. That one is virtually identical to my top one because it's a halogen. Oxygen, 2 minus, goes to oxygen plus an electron. A bit tricky now. I've got to have two of those to make four. O2, so I've got two atoms, of course, and four electrons. You've got to have a practice to get these right. And that's the end of this video.